for Peter, I, I think it's more just maintaining his focus. Because I think if you gear to, towards a, a style of a team too much or whatnot, you kind of have to try to change your game. And I think that's a dangerous uh, thing to do sometimes with goalies, especially when Peter's playing as well as he is. Just maybe some little things with, uh, with traffic and guys that hold on to the puck a little longer, uh, trying to make sure he stays patient, and, uh, but also active because, you know, Peter's very technical and sometimes can become very concerned about the technical aspect. So I just try to emphasize with him to stay loose and, and active, and, and uh, he seems to be responding. It seems like just the way this rain team has been built, I mean, it, and it benefits the goaltender just how defensively sound they've been. They're like that in the regular season also. I mean, and you mentioned some of that, that mental aspect, that almost sports psychology that comes into it with facing so few shots over certain games, but then very busy the next, or seeing when spurts where you're either really busy or you're just calm and not a lot in your area. I mean, is there a lot of the mental aspects you've been going over with this group to, to get them ready? Because it's not like you're seeing a shot on a, on a consistent basis. Um, probably the most difficult part about being a goaltender. But, you know, credit to Peter as well, because I think a lot of people think just because Peter has a night where he gets 20 or 22 shots that uh, his job's any easier, because it's a difficult game to play uh, to become a winner with the team that gives up a few shots, but at times gives up good, good opportunities, like any team does. It's very tough to, to maintain that consistency like that. So. Uh, I respect that type of a goaltender just as much as a goalie that uh, faces 45 shots a night. It's actually, you know, it's uh, it's very easy to jump into a game where you're getting tons of work and, and your, your blood's flowing and you're going with the game. It's very difficult to do when you're sitting there for a while and you're not getting any work and then all of a sudden you're expected to come up with a big save. Um, so yeah, that's probably been the biggest focus throughout. For all my time when I've had Peter from last year to this year, uh, he's been maintaining his uh, his mental aspect. And on the other side of the equation, you're also responsible for scouting the opposing team goaltenders. Mm -hmm. And this is the first series where we've kind of faced a, a two-headed monster, I would say, with Matt Hackett being the number one guy in San Diego and Anton Hudobin injured. But now it seems like Anton Forsberg or Corpus Salo, it could be either one. And their head coach even told their local news that he wasn't going to admit you know, who's going to be right. that number one game one starter for them. But what have you seen in their goaltending group? Because uh, it was it seemed like Corpus Salo that took it and ran with it. But here recently, he struggled and Forsberg's come in and yeah. got the job done. They're both good goaltenders. I've, I've watched tape on, on I know of them both. Uh, either one, it, that's he's got a, a great problem where he has two good goaltenders. And, uh, I don't think it's going to make a difference for the Ontario Reign, to tell you the truth. This team has played that way regardless of who they play. And if we come up against Kudobin, Hackett, uh, Forsberg, Kukasalo, I don't think it's going to really matter. I think the, the biggest focus is to respect uh, and have a humility that you know you got to earn your goals and uh, I think they're they're lucky in the sense they have two good goaltenders but I think we'll be okay.